Aim for the bullseye and let's add a custom bow to Minecraft. 121 Minecraft modding course is available down below with over 11 hours of content covering everything from the basics all the way to block entities and custom mobs. All right, we find ourselves back in Taylor once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be adding a custom bow to Minecraft. And yes, the intro was an arrow. That was at least supposed to be an arrow, you know. Um, but, you know, I, let's just add this freaking bow. Okay, let's just uh, let's just skip over this. So a custom bow is actually more straightforward than you might think. However, as with all of the things being, uh, you know, Minecraft modding, there are a couple of caveats to that statement. So we're going to start with a public static final registry object. This is, of course, inside of our mod items class to register the item. And that's going to be the calm underscore bow equal to the items dot register method over here. Then we're going to have the calm underscore bow as its name and the second parameter is going to be a supplier of a new bow item with new item properties most likely or most importantly having durability over here so that it can't stack and also that it has durability and that is the general custom bow done okay that's pretty good let's add it to the creative mode tab as this can be a thing that could be forgotten by some people sometimes but that is okay then of course now that we have the bow registered, we now need a custom item property for it because we need to change the bow's texture depending on how far we have pulled it back. Now, luckily, this is all done in the item properties class for us. So we can simply control left click on this. We scroll down just a little bit up here until we find the bow and we're going to copy over the bow register right here, the brush and the bow here. So just select all of this, control C to copy it. And then we're going to make a new method here, public. Oh, we could even make it a private. I mean, it doesn't even matter. Private static void make custom bow. We're going to have an item item in here. I'm going to use that in a second. And then we're simply going to paste in what we have copied. Do not worry once again about the whole crazy errors that you might get because very easily fixed. Well, obviously, we don't have access to the register method immediately. You have to say item properties dot register. And all of a sudden, everything is going to be fine. Item properties dot register. The brush over here, of course, we can delete because why would we need that? So we now have the make custom bow method that would register it for the custom bow, like the vanilla bow again. Well, that's not right because what we need is we need to pass in the parameter over here. Very straightforward. And now that basically we don't need to go into too many details here what it's doing. Highest level overview. It is giving you a different pull amount, right? So the pull item property is going to change depending on how far you've pulled it. And then pulling is either a zero or a one, whether or not we are actually like holding right click down. That's the whole idea. And now we can literally just call make custom bow mod items dot count bow dot get. And with that, we have now added the pull and the pulling item properties to our custom bow as well. And that is pretty freaking cool. But we're not done quite just yet because, of course, now we need to go down to the assets. First of all, we have a translation, which is, of course, very straightforward. And then we get the item model JSON files and, of course, also the textures. We're going to start with the item model JSON files. Those I'll actually be copying over. Those are, of course, available to you down below in the GitHub repository. And we'll be able to see that they are actually more straightforward than you might think. And then the same thing happens with the textures, which are, of course, also available. That is going to be the cotton bow and then pulling underscore zero, underscore one and underscore two over here. And we're going to take a look at the item model JSON files first. Of course, the normal one is the cotton bow, which, as you can see, just points to the normal cotton bow texture, which is, of course, this texture. Very straightforward, nothing too crazy yet going on. The first thing that's a little bit crazy here is the display because we want the bow to look a little bit different than just the same sort of cotton bow way. So the display just changes the third person, whether or not it's in the right hand or the left hand and the first person perspective just a little bit, right? You can see it rotates a little bit, it translates a little bit and it scales it down a little bit. So that is basically all we're doing in the display over here. And then the overrides, that is what we've seen last time as well with the item properties where we're saying, hey, if we're pulling, then I immediately want to, well, change to this texture over here, right? So this is when we start right clicking. Then if we're 65% of the done, like of the way done with the pull, then I want to actually show this texture right here. And lastly, 
I wanted to show not not the kohlrabi. I want to show this texture when we are 90% all the way done with pulling. And that is the whole idea in this case. So we're basically pointing to a different item model JSON file, right? Let's say in the case of this one. And then this one literally just points to a different texture. And this is also quite important that the different JSON files over here, they have the parent as the cow and bow. This is not strictly necessary, I believe. However, this is how Vanilla does it. And we didn't use it in the chisel use right here. Oh, actually, I know why this is important. No, 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 no. See, uh, neuron activation. I know why this is important because the other custom bows, of course, also need the different display. That is why we have it. Absolutely. That is the reason why we have this. Otherwise, it would look very strange or might, might look like, I mean, I don't even know what would happen. But basically, we don't want that. That is why this is the parent of the Kalpen Bow. This is why the parent is the Kalpen Bow. There you go. That's that's how you would say that. And that is quite important in that case. So that it has the same display. But even with this, we're not done quite just yet because we need one more thing. And that is if we were to shoot our arrow right now or our bow, then what would happen is that we would all be fine. However, there would be no zooming effect. And there is a slight zooming effect. You may or may not have ever noticed it before, but there is when you shoot a bow, there is a zoom effect. And to actually do this, we need a custom event class. So we're going to go to tutorial mode event, right click new Java class called the mod client events over here in this case. And we're going to just set this up. The uh, the actual class itself, we're going to set this up and then the method we're going to copy over. So above the class, we're going to have an at mod and then dot event bus subscriber in the parentheses mod ID is equal to tutorial mod dot mod ID. Then we're going to have this equal to the forge bus. Very importantly, not the file reader, but the forge bus. Exactly. And then value is going to be equal to dist dot client because, well, in this case, we actually need the this to be on the client. When it comes to the method, like I said, I'm going to copy this over. I'm going to explain. So this is a public static void on compute FOV modifier event over here with the compute FOV modifier event as a parameter. Of course, the add subscribe event annotation, extremely important that we add this. And then within here, we're basically saying, hey, if the player is using an item and that particular item is the Kalpen Bow, then we want to change the FOV depending on how many ticks the item has been used. This is the same thing that you can also see in the abstract play client player, I believe. Abstract client player. Let's see if this is correct. No, it is only the client player then maybe possibly client player, client player change event, abstract client player. It was the abstract client player. Thank you for that so much. But at the very bottom over here, you can see get field of view modifier. And you can see that if the item stack is a bow, then we're doing all of this craziness. So basically one of the things that is uh, quite important that we have this. It, it's just, it's this is the same code, by the way. It literally just looks a little bit nicer here. I actually name the variables in the proper manner versus, the, you know, having things like I and F1 and, and then like F. That's just not, it's not that nice to read. But yeah, that is basically everything we're going to need. So I guess let's jump into the game and see if it works. All right, fans, we're back in Minecraft. As you can see, the Cowton Bow has been successfully added to the game. And just to remind you what the normal bow looks like, right? So if I were to take the normal bow, you can see not only does the texture change, we also zoom in a tiny bit. And now if I use the Cowton Bow, you can see the same thing happens. And absolutely, it works totally fine. Of course, it's not going to work with our lamps because they... <laughs> <laughs> work with rightly well that's fine that's fine okay it's still kind of a funny one but there you go that is a custom bow added to minecraft freaking awesome man as per usual all of the code is available down below and next time in this video we'll talk a little bit more about events hope to see you there so yeah